The Monerotopia Price Report segment is sponsored by Local Monero. Avoid using KYC exchanges. Buy and sell Monero directly for fiat, peer-to-peer. Hey, what's up, guys? All right. Hey, buddy, what's going on, man? How you doing? Welcome welcome back, Sunita. Oh, Sunita, you're muted. <laughs> well, you. welcome back. I'm doing it on my laptop, so I think it's lagging on my end, sadly, guys. Uh, okay. okay. Yeah, I always um I always have to like slightly change my configuration, like taking my VPN off so that I, you know, get that half a half a second removal of delay, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Constant battle, constant battle. How you doing, man? What what's your what's your take on all that? I mean, we'll, we'll get into it later, I'm sure, but uh how you feeling about the the Monero CCS hack? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that someone at that level would have been keeping their Monero in in that kind of way, like in my mind, something as simple as just using cubes could have prevented all this. There's um, there's like a guide for how you can keep your wallet in an offline cube and then run your Monero node on a Hunix machine, which connects directly to Tor. Even that would have removed like a big question mark over a lot of different attack vectors that that happened here. Um, I just <laughs> I just can't believe why would you run Windows? Why would you use the insecure hot wallet Windows to log in? to the what's supposed to be to ssh into the more secure machine um which is supposed to be ubuntu which isn't really a security distro in the first place like okay if you're an expert you know what you're doing um you know how to configure windows and ubuntu then okay maybe um, maybe that could be a reasonable setup but um if you don't know what you're doing (laughs) then you really should going with cubes or a hardware wallet um or a separate laptop that's um you know isolated that's never been connected to the internet to, to sign transactions. Um, so I honestly just can't understand that. I think it would be cool if like either we just contributed directly to people, um, you know, that, that are making CSS proposals or um, like maybe if we had say three different people that manage CSS funds or CCS funds. And, um, and when you submit a CCS, you just say, Hey, I like this guy. I trust this guy. Um, I verified their setup, whatever. Um, so I want to go, you know, with person A of these, you know, of these three people. Um, so you kind of spread that risk a little bit. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, that's just one idea. I, it seems like it also should be. Oh, there's my reminder that the show is about to start. Uh, it's, it seems like. Um, <laughs> actually, that's. Oh, it's, did the time change happen yet? Usually that's. Supposed no, to go I think off it's an tomorrow. Hour hmm. Interesting. Um but yeah, anyway, so like usually, um, oh, I kind of lost my train of thought there. But uh, yeah, anyways, it's kind of, it's just a whole weird situation. Oh, it seems like escrow would be also another good way to go. Like some kind yeah. of multi-sig where you contribute to the CCS. If, um, you know, if the guy that's managing it, probably, I mean, I don't think it, Luigi, I don't know much about him, but he's spoken fairly highly of, but after this kind of miss, it's like, yeah. It's hard to say that he should keep managing those funds, but that's for other people to decide. I think not me. Um, but at any rate, you know, it's a multi-sig. Uh, let's suppose I want to contribute to a, to a project, um, and then either me and the recipient can coordinate, you know, to sign that transaction, or the guy managing uh, the CCS can sign that transaction. Right. That, that seems like a pretty reasonable way to go as well. Seems like anything would be better than than what we had uh, going on just previously. Yeah, I think some some kind of multi sig would would be good. But we'll we'll get into all this I'm sure more and more. The thing that that really scares me though is Fluffy keeps bringing up this. Um, he's like, it's entirely possible that's related to the ongoing tax that we've seen since April, as they include a variety of compromised keys, including Bitcoin wallets, seeds generated uh-huh. with all manner of hardware and software, uh, and include and includes uh, XMR. Um, the hack recently started seeing some more sweeps happen, uh, and they can tell that it's from the same hack since the surveillance chain sweeps go to the same cluster of addresses. Um, that that's that's terrifying to me, right? Have you been following that at all? These uh... yeah, yeah, that is kind of scary. I, I definitely rotated some keys when um, when that was all happening. Yeah, I, I started kind of doing think it it's... last night out of out of fear. Um, <laughs> no, I, I kind of igno- I guess ignored it at first. The problem is you have so much going. Like I was saying in the in the onset of this, right? Like it takes work to be your own bank, 
um, yeah. unfortunately, you got to be a little proactive, right? Yeah. I, I tend to think that it was sort of a common, so I think you covered it. We covered it like a couple of months ago with milk sad. Um, and then the last pass breach and all that. Yeah. It, I, I tend to think it's a combination of a few different kind of major vectors that people still haven't fixed or, or caught up from. Um, but maybe it's something deeper, right? Maybe there's like, maybe there's a hardware problem with randomness generation yeah. or some like known algorithm has been hacked by the NSA, right? I mean, we couldn't really rule those things out. Although it's, it, it does seem a bit strange because I, I think the way that a lot of this randomness and the entropy is generated for different wallets, like we're using different libraries across different coins. Um, I don't know, perhaps like some key hardware element is also compromised and, and that's, that's causing problems. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it is kind of scary because you just don't know. So the, the safest thing to do is, is to rotate your keys, rotate your seed phrases. Um, probably if you can generate, so use an offline computer completely offline to generate those keys and then roll some dice and add that entropy into the, to the generation so that if you have like a compromised hardware module um, or some kind of like compromised algorithm that's generating those keys, um, you add some dice rolls into there, get some extra entropy, uh, hopefully, and um, and then keep yourself safe. Rotating your keys is also a risk point in and of itself. So, um, yeah, it's not easy to be your own bank. It's it's stressful. It's stressful. It really is. It really is. Um, That's why my personal opinion is kind of like we can't exactly expect grandma to um, to be doing all this on her own. Like that's Crypto is still not ready. No crypto is ready for like prime time adoption, replace fiat or anything like that. Um, it's still like you still have to be fairly responsible. And there are people that are unable to do that. So right, that's right. just the reality where we're at. I mean, we, we get the benefit of being the early adopters, right? But it comes it comes with great risk, right? So so we're here early, uh, but it, it's we're using this technology at a more risky time. Uh, but the yeah. likely scenario is that that your Monero will be worth more in in five ten years from now than what it is today. But you're you're taking the risk in being the early in being the early adopter and using this tech on the onset, right? I, I still think there's a lot of very like there's to me it's kind of like when I when we talk about graphene, we're like, listen, why haven't you gotten like a Pixel six A, you know, for a couple hundred bucks and installed graphene, right? Like. It's a secure system. It's the most secure private phone you're going to find out on the market unless like we've just missed some big project. I say the same thing about cubes. Like if you get an old laptop, like you could even get a ThinkPad um, 220. Was it a 220T? I always get these kind of mixed up. Anyways, there's like two major ThinkPad brands before Intel ME, but you don't even have to do that. Just get any old laptop that that is compatible with cubes, install it, and then run your crypto wallets, like isolate every single one of them only do crypto on that laptop, maybe, maybe secure banking. But what you've done is just totally isolated a lot of problems, like that whole LastPass problem. Okay, you have a separate virtual machine for your key, uh, your password manager, right? So only that virtual machine contains your password manager. It can't be stealing your keys from, um, you know, from, from all of your other wallets. Like just the simple, something as simple as isolating your system with a cubes machine, a dedicated laptop that will cost you, you know, a few hundred dollars at most install cubes and just isolate your activities in a way and you'll sleep with much, much greater peace of mind. Um, I mean, I guess a hardware wallet does the same thing. I'm a bit of a shit coiner from time to time. So I sometimes need to access shit coin wallets, which means I want to isolate them into a separate environment. And sometimes, um, hardware wallets are a little bit cumbersome. Um, and, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll, people say, Oh, cubes is so hard. Listen, I'll <laughs> be honest. The first time I installed cubes, um, I was about halfway into a bottle of tequila in Puerto Vallarta and I was like playing with Linux and trying to do like a dual boot setup and trying to do all this stuff. And I didn't even know how to use the command line at the time. And I was like, man, this seems really difficult. Could I just install cubes? All right, let me try it. Let me just try it. Maybe everyone says it's advanced for, you know, the, the hackers, whatever. I don't know what the hell I'm doing, but let me try it. And, and it totally, like, it was fine. Like I booted it up and it's like, oh, this is actually pretty easy. Hmm. Wow. I wish I had done this, you know, a week ago. <laughs> so it, it's, it's not as hard as people think. If you can make an ISO, if you can make a bootable USB, if you've ever installed Linux, you can run cubes. Like it is a little bit of a learning curve, but you're smart enough to do it. I promise you, you'll figure it out. Like that, that's, it's such an easy way to protect your crypto. Okay. Rant. Yeah, rant yeah, over. Yeah. Slash <laughs> I, I get what you're saying, but yeah, that that's not the solution for average Joe. 
right? That's not the solution for the average Joe. Maybe yeah. not for your normie, but if you've installed Linux, like if you know how to make a bootable USB and you've dropped that onto a laptop, you've gotten into your, you've done that before, you can install and run cubes. You're smart enough to run cubes. It's it's yeah. not nearly as complex as yeah. you might think. Yeah. Well, I, I represent the normies, right? I think that that's kind of my role here in the space too, being the bridge between guys like you and the normies. We we, we do need the, the normie solutions um, because without the normies, we're not going to have a Monero economy. Uh, at the end of the day, this needs to be a tool that people can rely on and just use as money, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, exactly. early early days, people are going to have to do a little extra work. I do think it's as simple as though, you know, just generating generating your private seed, your private keys in it in a way that you can can rely on that, you know, there, there was no, uh, you know, greatly eliminating the potential for any 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 hacking or anything like that. So like offline computer, generate a seed, send Monero to it. You should be good to go with that, right? And write down your seed. I mean, yeah, yeah. I would say those are like that. Um, those are the three main solutions, right? Yeah. Offline laptop that you've ripped out the Wi-Fi, completely wiped the hard drive. Maybe you're running tails. Okay, um, hardware wallet or cubes. Like one of those three solutions is is within reach of you know 99% of people in crypto yeah. right now. Yeah, but you should just be able to rely on generating a wallet and cake, right? It should just be as just as reliable, right? Because that's what yeah, that's what the normies are going to be doing, right? And they're relying on that and they're writing down their seed and they should be able to sleep well at night with that. Um, so, all right, buddy, I guess take it away on price and we'll, we will continue this conversation, I'm sure. Buddy, quick question though. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, you have two charts in backstage. Do you need both of them? Yeah, and I no, just want to because the thing is we cap our like um, viewers on stage section, so. I guess when you can mm. keep going, keep doing what you're doing. Just making you aware. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. You know what, what had happened? You know what? I won't explain it. It's some technical <laughs> dumbness. Okay. Um, I'm afraid to shut one of them down. Cause no, I don't no, don't worry about it. Is, yeah, yeah. Is the one I'll exit them both when, uh, when, when you're finished. When I'm done, yeah. Yeah. Totally. All right. Take it away, my friend. Cool. Okay. So we got the Monero chart in front of us here. Um, price is kind of doing that thing where it pumps, you know, we get the mega pump and then it kind of fizzles out and you're, you're like, okay, maybe, you know, when is the next pump going to happen? Bitcoin kind of did this thing where uh, it, it looked like it had, like it was going to break this triangle. And then it was like, nah, just kidding. Let's see if I can find that. Maybe I deleted that chart already. That's a shame. That's too bad. Okay. Anyways, let's go to the eight hour. We'll take off the wave magic here. And then essentially what happened is Bitcoin had this kind of like triangle, uh, this triangle pattern here. And then it broke to the upside with this big green dildo right here. And everyone's like, yeah, okay, we're breaking this big long-term line here. And then and then it just kind of fizzled out. So to me, right now, I'm, I'm becoming very suspicious of this pump. I'm becoming suspicious of how much longer it can last. But that doesn't mean that it, you know, it, it can't pump more, right? Like uh, I had, like I missed most of this. I was sitting out for most of that. Um, it wasn't until right around here that I was like, yeah, you know, okay, this thing is actually could probably pump. Um, but still, you can notice we've got this really big long-term rising resistance here, and we're effectively sitting at that. And things have, have broken this resistance once before. So to me, this, this looks very much like the same pattern that we've seen all year long, where you get this kind of massive pump out of nowhere, and then you kind of just fizzle out at the top. You get these little fake out kind of BART charts, like, for example, this guy right here. That was a BART chart if you go down into a shorter time frame, like if you look at the one hour hour, the, the two hours, something like that. So, um, yeah, that's kind of what's happening right now. Uh, Monero did get a nice little bump uh, this past week, which is which is nice. We got a big bump up. When was that? It was right after the price support. We got another big major uh, green candle. So I would uh, I would like to see us get a little bit higher. One problem that we're, we're going to be looking at on a technical sense in this chart. Oh, we need to go to the weekly. And turn off the wave magic. That takes too long. Okay. One problem that we're going to be hitting here in a technical sense on this chart is this very large um, uh, what was support and now is basically resistance. Effectively, we broke that line down, and now we're kind of coming back to the top side of that line. On occasion, you you can see charts that, that sort of bounce up along the line like that until they break to the top side. I wouldn't be necessarily convinced that that's going to happen right here. If the rest of the crypto market continues to go to the upside, then probably something like that could happen. 
right now it seems more like shit coins are popping off a few at a time uh like we talked about last week uh, soul was a pretty big was a pretty big one apparently so uh the news should cover this we won't really talk about it too much but sam the bank man uh fried man is about to get fried sent to jail for potentially you know like 100 years or something like that um pro probably it won't be that long maybe he'll get like a decade or something something slightly less slightly less than what ross ulbrich did for making a website um this guy for making basically the the biggest fraud in in american history stealing more money than anyone has in in history uh, is 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 probably only going to get like 10 or 20 years uh but we'll let uh we'll let the news guys cover that but effectively yeah there's there's kind of like this soul has been has just been mega pumping yeah, let's see if we can go to a different chart. Here's the ETH Bitcoin chart. Um, a little bit schizophrenic at the moment. But again, um, this thing is kind of sitting at support. If you wanted to try and play one coin against the other, I do think that this is probably a good spot to try and enter an ETH BTC position. At a minimum, you kind of expect to probably get, you know, 15% um, better than Bitcoin. If this line breaks down and you confirm a few days below it, that, that, that would be really problematic, uh, especially especially if you kind of touch this area right here, um, kind of that 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 uh, that wick low. Things shouldn't really get that low, but hey, you know, who, who knows, right? Anything can happen. It's crypto. Uh, but let's take a quick look at Sol USD. I'm not saying you should buy it. I didn't have any. I wasn't holding any. But uh, I just want to show you guys this thing is pumped like you know, 127% in, in the past few months. And then off the bottom, you know, it's pumped like 400%. So, but it's really hard. With a coin like this, it's really hard to to ask yourself, okay, well, when am I going to get in this thing, right? Are you, are you going to try and get in? Um, let's just say that uh, that you were smart and, and you didn't try and get in until the very end of the year. Okay, maybe down here you would try and grab that, maybe down here. But so many of these low points to me were were dubious, were questionable. Like, okay, is that actually a low? It's, it's hard to get into a coin like this, but it's a strategy as a trader that you can use sometimes to, um, to, to try and keep yourself to give yourself a good chance of getting gains when something crashes you've got a big bear market things have washed out there's blood in the streets what you do is you put some small small percentage of your stack like less than one percent maybe like one or two percent into various shit coins and if they pump then you might get something like a 5x you might have say two percent of your stack become ten percent of your stack you know within within a few months and if you lose it all, you say, well, okay, all right, I'm an idiot. I bought shit coins. It was a risk I, I knew I was, I was going to be taking. That's, that's one strategy that you can get. And it's one strategy that I used here with um, recently with the crypto pump that we had is because I really wasn't too sure about what any of that was. I had had some nice gains, you know, from, from really the whole, for the, from the past year or for the past, you know, six to nine months. And I said, okay, I don't really know what's going to happen. I don't want to risk most of my stack. So what am I going to do? I'm going to buy some shit coins. I'm going to buy the ones that I think have the best chance of pumping. And uh, if the market goes up, then I should have some outsized gains. And that should at least keep me in the gains business, right? So these are kind of like strategies that you can do if you, if you want to be a little bit more active with your trading, um, if you want to try and protect your stack, which is definitely what I was what I was wanting to do. So I try and play all sides of it. I've got my Monero that I consider my hodl. It's a fundamental play. I basically never sell it. Um, Maybe uh, I, the only time I sell it is when I need to spend it, right? So, um, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of where crypto is looking at. Let's take a look at total really quick. Uh, actually, let's take a look at some of the shit coins. All right, you can see we're on the two day here. Let's go to the daily. All right, so Link is in white again. You can see that Link has been one of the top performers. Um, I don't remember which one this this one is. The yellow one down here. Anyways. Dog is kind of like uh, trailing the pack. Litecoin is is definitely at the bottom. So Litecoin is in blue. Dog is in yellow. Oh, Bitcoin is in orange. So Bitcoin has been doing you know better than pretty much everything else. Monero actually, with the pump that we had this past week, has done pretty good as well. So, uh, and then Bcash is in green. They had some massive pump earlier this year. Good for them. Uh, and then we take a look at the Bitcoin dominance as well, uh, really quickly. So this thing again, still you know still looking nice. It's there's a question of of how long can this continue? I don't have any real opinions on how this chart goes. If we wanted to take a look at historic levels and what this chart has done historically, um, getting back up to the sixty three percent area, that wouldn't be totally out of the question. That that could maybe happen with the uh, with the Sam Bankman trial being over. Um, maybe maybe they're going to pivot their their guns onto some new aspect of the crypto system. Maybe it could be CZ. Maybe it could be Tether um, and Palo. I don't know. It seems like they've continued to operate for a very long time and have not been really attacked. 
So it's kind of hard to think that suddenly there's going to be attacked. Anyways, um, we do have, uh, we do have like, this is, this is a strong chart, right? Overall, this is a very strong looking chart for the moment, but it has gone up quite a lot. And if hypothetically we think that crypto is going to continue to perform at some point, there's going to be some rotation into alts. Like we said, Right now, it's it's a little bit, uh, you know, alts are popping a few at a time, getting outsized gains a few at a time, kind of like Sol did, kind of like Link did. Uh, and you could probably expect that to continue here. If we don't see a big, broad movement to the upside with everything uh, in the next couple of weeks, I'll probably start, <laughs> I'll, I'll probably start really singing out, singing out that, uh, hey, things are fizzling out here. Don't, uh, don't be getting greedy. Don't be chasing. That's a big deal. Also, don't be chasing. If you're like, hey, I saw this shitcoin pump. Uh, I'm going to trade into that shitcoin. No, no, this is not the time to be chasing. You can chase. The only time that you can chase and it can actually work out for you is the beginning of a bull market. So right here is like in a very broad macro sense, okay, we are seeing the signs that are starting to convince us that this is potentially the beginning of a bull market. This is not like the beginning of a bull market in earnest, like the post March, 2020 events, right? When everything crashed and everything kind of came back and then was holding steady. Like that was the beginning of a big bull market in earnest. They turned on the money printers. The macro was extremely clear what was happening in that case. Yeah. You, you can chase and you can get away with it right now. It's, I wouldn't recommend chasing. I, I don't think it's a great idea. Uh, let's take a look at Monero in terms of the rest of the shitcoin market cap. So what we have is the XMR divided by total three. Total three is basically all the crypto market cap minus Bitcoin minus Ethereum. So that's what uh, that's what we're looking at right here. And you can see that, um, you know, I mean, we're basically doing pretty good. We're kind of in this, uh, this, this triangle pattern right here. Ideally, you'd want to see this triangle pattern break to the upside. It's typically, uh, this is a neutral triangle, so it could break either way. At the moment, it kind of looks a bit like a bullish triangle because, uh, or a pennant, right? Because you got this big move to the upside where, where uh, Monero, how much is that? Let's see. Uh, take a look at the percentage that Monero did ahead of everything else. Yeah, so Monero pumped about 150% um, from the bottom, uh, really at the beginning of 2022, which is kind of crazy, right? Monero, it was at the end of the bull market that Monero was at its lowest relative to the rest of the crypto market. So anyways, it's pumped up. This looks a lot like a pennant. Um, again, this would be another sign that's like we've talked about, like, okay, at some point, we I feel like we do need to come revisit the lows. I, I just... It's hard for me to think that now is the time that the bull market starts in earnest. The macro doesn't say so. Um, we're we're still kind of looking at some minor problems with um with with the whole debt market. Like there there's a lot of craziness happening in but with with currencies across the world with debt, and it's it's just difficult to think that nothing bad is going to happen here with rates being held this high across the world uh, for this long. So we're looking here at the at the uh, uh, the yields, uh, all of the different yield spreads. So on the bottom here, we've got the yield curve inversion kind of slightly ticked back down in the past week. You've got the long-term yields coming a little bit to the downside. The The short-term yields are still kind of holding steady. This seems to just be holding steady for a very long period of time. We also had the Fed on Wednesday uh, came out and they said that they, they didn't raise rates at all this Wednesday, which was unsurprising. The market didn't expect them to raise rates. They had all but said that they were not going to raise rates. So that really wasn't much of a factor this week for anything. Normally, I try and listen to the J-PAL speech, but um, two factors, I was out of town, and also it's normally very dry, and you have to read between the lines. He's also a lawyer, you know, so he speaks pretty well, and it just didn't seem like there was going to be anything important that was going to be said this week. So uh, we also had the unemployment numbers came out. This would be the unemployment numbers right here. Now, one thing the Fed has been saying they're trying to do is to get the unemployment level a little bit higher. Because with unemployment being so low, it means there's a very high demand for labor. With a high demand for labor, it means that you can demand a higher wage, right? I can go to, I could, I could go to a semiconductor company, right, and say, hey, I, you know, here's my resume, whatever. Um, you know, I, I need a high wage. I don't have to work. I, I don't, you know, you're gonna have to pay me a lot of money for me to go back to work right now. So that's that's kind of like in a broad sense, that's kind of what the market has been feeling um, quite a lot. So. Because unemployment is so low, because there's so much demand for labor, high wages equals slightly higher inflation. So one of the things that the Fed is trying to do is actually get these, these unemployment numbers to move to the upside a little bit. I think they want to target like four and a half or five percent. The only problem, the only problem with this is that massive pumps in uninflation seemingly 
come out of nowhere and they're basically always associated or almost always associated with recession and recession is associated with the market pulling back. So right now you can see it looks like things have kind of bottomed out here. The Fed is kind of getting what they want. They've gone from about 3.3% uh, unemployment down to, uh, sorry, up to um, like 3.9% unemployment, 3.8, 3.9, yeah, 3.9. So the only thing, you know, that would be cause for concern is that the Fed, um, they, they seemingly act in such a way that they're always like, they're always overreacting, right? They drop rates, they printed a shitload of money, and they're like, oh, don't worry about it. It's the inflation. No, it's not going to happen. It's, you know, we've got it under control. And then suddenly there's all this inflation. They're like, oh, I, we could, you know, I guess we have to act now. So now the, the question is, okay, they're going to hold rates higher for longer. And I think they're going to hold them as high as they can for as long as they can because they need to buy, and they're going to try and raise them as high as they can because they need to buy as much room to drop rates. Like instead of dropping rates from say 4% down to 2% or one and a half percent and getting back into the same regime that we had after 2008, I do think what they really are trying to do is push rates up to like 6% so that they can drop them down to say 4% maybe. Um, and, and, you know, once, once the economy starts having problems, it, it gives them this room to renormalize rates, which is something that they really need to do. We've never seen rates be what they were after 2008 for such a long period of time. So anyways, if, if we start seeing this pump up, that's another signal. Like if we, you know, if we get another month that does that and then another month does that, that's a big signal that we really need to be careful in this market. And you need to be taking some kind of risk mitigation measures against, uh, against the long side, especially if you're a hodler. So, uh, let's take a look at some of the macro stuff and then we'll, we'll call it a day here, move the show along. There's a lot of stuff to talk about. So, uh, this is the dollar index, uh, currently having a bit of trouble. I, uh, I do think there's still a reasonable possibility that, that this thing is not out of steam. A little bit of a broadening structure right here on the, uh, on the way it's acting, maybe just kind of like a, a bull flag, but dollar index has made a big run to the upside and is now kind of like in this channel. At some point, it could come to the upside and uh, and try and reassert itself. Perhaps that would still be a few months off, and perhaps that would that would uh, coincide with some kind of risk off event, some kind of like big, um, you know, big problem effectively. <coughs> Excuse me. So. Gold here, uh, yeah, gold is kind of like had a big run, hit this resistance, still kind of like trying to figure out what it wants to do. We got one day that we poked above there, like we talked about last Saturday, um, but then it came right back down, hasn't been able to close two days above this, this big resistance line. I still think gold is strong, um, as we've talked about quite a lot. Gold is just a good, for me, it's a good place to park my money. It's got minimal downside risk, significant upside potential, long-term play, fundamental play. Um, it's, it's a place that I just feel like, like when I think about these attacks, like, okay, people are getting their wallets drained and we don't really know how, um, we're not really sure, quite sure how all of these attacks are happening. And I think to myself, well, okay, what happens if I lose my crypto, lose a significant portion of my crypto? Um, I say, okay, well, I've still got a huge gold stash. Um, I can recover from that. It'll be painful. Um, if I lose all my crypto or some like, or, or let's suppose a network failure, right? Like network failures can happen. Like things like these, these networks are not immune to these kinds of problems, uh, including Monero. We could see a network failure in any, in any major coin. So I think to myself, okay, if some major failure happens and I lose a huge portion of my net worth in crypto, okay, well, I still got at least a good chunk of gold. I can recover from that. So another reason why I like gold, it's just, you know, it's a diversification play. It's a safety play. Um, gold, gold can't be hacked is what you're saying alchemy is kind of i mean possible. they can they can come take it from me i guess they can, yeah, they can, you know they, but that, that's true of everything yeah it could be lost when you when you say a network failure in crypto what, what are you referring to let's just say an inflation bug right an exploited that's inflation bug that. in bitcoin like let's suppose let's suppose bitcoin that that 2018 bug that they or the 2016 bug they fixed in 2018 let's suppose that guy was nefarious and he had just like exploited that inflation bug uh, that would crush Bitcoin price and it would crush everything else price yeah. as well because they're all correlated and the loss of confidence in Bitcoin is loss of confidence across the board. So, but there's all kinds of different failures, right? Like there's yeah. DDoS attacks. There's, I mean, who knows? Yeah, it all goes back to that idea, right? So, you, so we're, we're being our own bank, but at, at a time when it's still early days, right? Where there, there's, there is, there's always going to be risk because of the nature of what we're, what we're doing here. But there's more risk now in these earlier days, I would say, right? Yeah, I'm I'm not convinced at this point, like it's been 14 years from an era, it's been almost a decade. I'm not entirely convinced of when this becomes as seamless as starting a bank account. 
Um, I mean, yeah, there's the pain in the ass of doing all your KYC to get your bank account and begging them to hold your money for you. Um, you know, so there's that kind of like there's its own kind of like problems, but I'm not convinced of when it becomes about as seamless as, as having a bank account. It's yeah, no, really. Yeah. I think it's already I mean, easier. It's already technically a lot easier for me from my perspective. And we, we it use, is easier, you know, but it the hard part is is the is the stress that comes along with the risk of using these systems, right? But the systems yeah. themselves, they do work. They're very easy. I mean, you download you download uh, an app on your phone and you're up and running, right? Like you said, there's no KYC. You could be completely anonymous, and boom, you're you're running. You're you got a bank account. You got a quote unquote bank account. And you can start sending money back and forth to each other. And all you have to do is write down a seed as long as all those things work. And like you said, there's no, there's no critical flaw, you know, network failure. There's no, um, but once it, it, it does work, uh, you know, if you're trusting that, that it works as intended, it's, it is very easy, I think. Yeah, I, su I suppose so. It's, it's not, it's not really that hard. Um, Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. It's mostly just the uh, the stress of holding your own stuff. Yeah. And those those particular pain points of backing up your seed. Yeah. I read an article that the cops are like they're all trained now to look for um to look for seed phrases. They know what they look like now. So oh, like, yeah, that's scary. Yeah, I don't doubt yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So put your seed somewhere that it's difficult to find. You know, <laughs> it's basically that won't be found unless you already know where it is. That kind of thing. Wow. Let's see. Okay. Last thing we'll talk about is, uh, is stocks here. This is the NASDAQ. And after a very big drop off that we talked about last week, this, uh, this down here came back, um, now back inside of this channel at the moment, this is starting to look like a downward or sorry, uh, like a bull flag, right? So you got this downward channel after a big move. And, um, you know, there was, there was a little bit of danger here when this breakdown happened and we said, Hey, you know, maybe, maybe this head and shoulders, uh, target could still be playing out, which would be somewhere around uh which would be somewhere around here um the nasdaq uh head and shoulders did not play uh did not completely play out the s p one basically did meet its target like it it fully it fully hit the target that you would expect uh that you would expect it to hit from that breakdown so stocks really came back in a big way and maybe that's a part of the reason why crypto sort of um treaded water here and, and didn't do a whole lot maybe a lot of that money went back into stocks so I still, I mean, stocks are always optimistic and maybe the Fed, maybe it's different this time. There's still like these big, these big macro problems on the horizon. And it, it, the, the timeline still probably look more like next year than they look like immediately. So, but, but it's, it's just hard for me to, to really like get long this market with everything I have. Uh, I still look at this thing and I say, I'm, I'm not confident that, that this is, that this is a strong market. Um, you can see here we've got the uh, in green. That's the U.S. like total U.S. liquidity. Again, that's like reverse repos in combination with the Fed balance sheet. Really, just kind of trending sideways and down here. Global liquidity continues to drop off. Really, when it comes to the stock market, my thinking is that you only need one of these going up for stock markets to be um, price positive. So, uh, yeah, I mean, just you know, be careful out there. Again, don't be chasing. If you're if you've been long, if you're hodling, you can maybe continue to hodl. I, I don't see why you wouldn't. Um, you know, you, you, we might still have to wait some time period to to get some big gains, but there is still the distinct possibility that Bitcoin could make it to forty thousand or forty four thousand. Like that could legitimately happen. Like if this line, so for example, last thing we'll say here is that if this line right here breaks to the upside and holds on the upside here for like a few days. Not just like breaks it and comebacks down and bar chart and all this bullshit, but like actually breaks above and holds at least for a few days, ideally closes a week above. You could probably expect the things you're going to pump here to the like 45,000 area. Um, that and that's like that would be okay if things pump there. That's where you need if you if you at all reallocate funds, that's where you need to take something off the table. Those are major, major standard deviation levels. Those are psychological levels that the market in aggregate has that doesn't know that they have. This level right here, these top blue bands, that would be an exit point if you're if you're trying to trade on a on a long term basis. Um, that's that's a perfect point, and also that's probably a great point for um, one of the one of the ETFs to be approved. And 
and and we've all seen what happens when a major institution starts accepting Bitcoin. You think, oh, price is going to go up, but then they use it as exit liquidity and opportunity for all of the people coming into the market. They use that as an opportunity to dump on people um, because of that exit liquidity is, is present. So anyways, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of how I'm thinking about the situation here. I don't have high confidence necessarily in one direction or the other. Um, so for me, in the way that I usually manage my funds, I only do crazy shit with a very small percentage, and I like to have high confidence that I think I know where the market is going to actually be in the market. If I'm not too sure, I usually just sit out, and I'm comfortable with that. Um, it means that uh, sometimes I might sit out on big pumps like this, and that, that's fine. That's But that's my personal style. A lot of people have different styles of trading as well. So um, I feel like, hey, I got enough here early on in the year. Um, I want to see some more clarity in the market before I really... Um, make a big movement with a big allocation of funds again, uh, again, apart from my hodl. So uh, that's the price report today. Awesome, man. Yeah, yeah. Good take. So, so you're saying, uh, in, in, despite the fact that we've seen a recent pump, you don't feel super comfortable if you were if you were looking to make big trades to to move out of Bitcoin right now with the hope that there'd be a, you know, a pullback. You think it's kind of like too much of a 50-50 situation where it could still pump up from here, right? Yeah. Yeah, if, if I was going to try and take any trade at all, it would actually probably be a leverage trade with a very tight stop. Um, so, for example, like let's suppose I wanted to bet on the short side because that's the pattern. That's been the pattern for all year long. You pump and then you kind of fizzle out. Like you kind of make these little bar charts, you pretend like you're going to pump and then you come back down. Right now, what I would maybe do, like if I was, if I was going to try and take a trade at all, um, I would probably take a leverage trade to the downside. And then I would put a stop loss at like maybe 36,000 right there, or maybe like just slightly higher, like 36.4. Um, and I'd say, okay, you know, if, if I lose that trade, sure, that's, um, what would that be? Maybe that uh, maybe I'd lose 5% on that. But then the downside target at least would be to this area, right? So you'd be looking for 17% down. Because if this thing fails to the downside or fizzles out, it, it's probably going to hit this, hit this line down here. So anyways, um, again, you know, that's just like my personal way that I'm managing my funds. Um, Definitely, definitely, I have to acknowledge that this big pump right here was kind of a miss because I didn't like any of this action. My bias was to the downside, so that was definitely one that I missed. So, um, but you know, you're never going to get them all right. Uh, so, anyways, yeah, good luck out there, guys. All right, man. Good luck in in every way, right? Uh, tra trading, holding your crypto, moving it around, <laughs> not losing your keys. Um. Body, please stick around if you can, because uh, I know there's going to be a lot more discussion around the CCS stuff. Would love to continue to get your insights. On all cool. that jazz. Yeah, I'll be here. All right. All right. Thank you, Body. Appreciate it.